Hello guys, welcome to another integral video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome integral, which is actually the Laplace transform of hyperbolic tangent of t. So this is uh, all in all a really great problem because it ties in the Laplace transform, integration, hyperbolic trig functions, power series, and the digamma function all in one, which I think is really crazy, really cool, and overall just a great time. So without any further ado, let's jump into the integral. Now, in order to do this integral, we're first going to do an easier one. We're going to do the Laplace transform of hyperbolic secant of t. And the reason for this is because hyperbolic tangent of t equals hyperbolic sine of t times hyperbolic secant of t. And since hyperbolic sine of t is just e to the t minus e to the negative t over t, when you multiply by e to the t or e to the negative t and then take the Laplace transform, the Laplace transform just ends up being shifted to the left or right. So we can use that in order to um, use the Laplace transform of hyperbolic secant and transform it into the Laplace transform of hyperbolic tangent. So let's jump into this integral. We're going to plug in our formula directly. Now what we want to do is we want to use an infinite series to solve this because um, we have this e to the negative t right here. And so what's going to happen is since we're going from 0 to infinity, e to the negative t is always less than or equal to 1. So if we multiply by e to the t on the top and bottom, we can use the power series for 1 over 1 plus x, which is valid when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. And so we're going to be able to actually plug that in and get our Laplace transform. What we're going to do is multiply on the top and bottom by e to the negative t. And then we're going to apply the power series. And since this is a non-rigorous calculus video on YouTube, we're going to exchange our sum and our integral. Now, this integral right here that we ended up with is actually pretty simple. Uh, you can also do it using the just replacing s with s plus 1 plus 2n in the formula for the Laplace transform of 1. And what we're going to end up with is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over s plus 1 plus 2n. Now, what I'm actually going to do here is this series by itself is, of course, convergent since it's alternating and decreasing. But if we actually split up the terms into the positive and negative terms, then each of those series will be divergent because they're similar to the harmonic series, right? But we're actually, we don't really care about that. We're going to split them up and then we're going to rearrange the terms so that it's into a form that we can actually use. So what that's going to look like is our positive terms are going to be of this form. So we have our first positive term is when n equals 0. We just have 1 over s plus 1. And then our next positive term is when n equals 2. So that's going to be 1 over s plus 5 plus 1 over s plus 9, etc., 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 right? And for our negative terms, it's going to be pretty much the same. 1 over s plus 2, or I'm sorry, not plus 2, plus 3, right? Because we have s plus 1 plus 2n. And then our next term is going to be 1 over s plus 7, because we only have odd numbers, 1 over s plus 11, and so on and so forth. And so what we want to do now is on the bottom, we're changing by 4 in each um, jump here. But we can use it, uh, we can use these sums and convert them into a form that uh, is much easier to deal with if we have it changing by 1 each time. So in order to change a change of 4 into a change of 1, all we have to do is divide by 4. So we're going to divide by 4 in the top and bottom. So on the top, that just means we're going to change this 2 to a 1 half, since 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. And then we're going to have s over 4 plus 1 over 4, s over 4 plus 5 over 4, s over 4 plus 9 over 4, etc., etc., etc. Same thing here, s over 4 plus 3 over 4, s over 4 plus 7 over 4 s over 4 plus 11 over 4. Now let's write out these sums. Okay, so writing this in sum notation, we're going to have 1 half the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over s over 4 plus 1 fourth plus n. Then minus 1 half the sum from n equals 0 to infinity 
of 1 over s over 4 plus 3 over 4 plus n. Now, here's the cool trick that we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is flip the negative signs. So we're going to bring this negative inside here. We're going to make this positive, and then we're going to put a negative here, positive here. We're going to bring a negative out here and a negative right here. Now that these are negative, here's the trick. We're going to add to both sums the sum of 1 over n plus 1. Now, of course, adding an infinite number, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 is definitely infinite, um, is not something that we're allowed to do. But since we're adding it to both sums at the same time, we know that when we add these sums together, we're going to end up with our original sum anyway. So now this sum might remind you of a special formula for di gamma. We have di gamma of x is equal to negative gamma plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus x. And as you can see, that's mirrored clearly in what we have here. All we have to do is add to this first one plus gamma over 2 and to the second one minus gamma over 2. And so now this whole first part on the top here is just negative 1 half di gamma of this, which is s plus 1 over 4. And the second bit is just plus 1 half di gamma of this, which is s plus 3 over 4. And so there we have gone from the integral of a hyperbolic trig function into di gammas. I think that's pretty crazy. And I definitely love this result when I got it the first time. Now, for the next part, we're going to convert this using our formulas for the Laplace transform into the Laplace transform of hyperbolic tangent, because this is the Laplace transform of hyperbolic secant. So, for the Laplace transform of hyperbolic tangent, we know that hyperbolic tangent equals e to the t, such t, over 2 minus e to the negative t such t over 2. And this is just using the formula for hyperbolic sine. Then if we take the Laplace transform of this whole thing, I'll call our Laplace transform just this fancy L. I'll just leave it like that. We're going to end up with 1 half times. Now, the only thing that we have to change when we're multiplying by e to the t is we replace s with s minus 1 because that's how it kind of shifts when you multiply by e to the t. It just changes s to s minus 1. So we have negative 1 half di gamma of s plus 1 over 4. But remember, we re replace s with s minus 1. So this just becomes s over 4. And then we have plus 1 half di gamma of s plus 2 over 4. But when we replace s with s minus 1, we're just going to end up with s plus 1 over 4. Then we're going to add 1 half, negative 1 half di gamma of, again, we have s plus 1 over 4. But since we have now e to the negative t, we're adding 1 instead of subtracting 1. So we're going to end up with s plus 2 over 4. Then we have plus 1 half di gamma of, and then instead of s plus 3, we're going to end up with s plus 4 over 4. Okay. Okay, one thing I forgot about was this negative sign here, and I had I did the whole problem, ended up with the wrong answer, and I had to go back. So, um, so we have that negative sign there, of course. And so if we multiply all these out, we have negative 1 fourth di gamma of s over 4, plus 1 fourth di gamma of s plus 2 over 4 plus another 1 fourth right here from this one so that's just going to be plus 1 half and then we're going to have minus 1 fourth di gamma of s over 4 plus 1 and that is our answer now another thing you could do right here, uh, actually to simplify that I actually am going to do because I think it works out pretty nicely, is one uh, rule of the di gamma function, which comes from x gamma of x equals di gamma uh, equals x gamma of x plus one. You can kind of mess around with this, take the natural log and then the derivative, and what you're going to end up with. 
So you're going to find out that digamma of x plus 1 equals 1 over x plus digamma of x. You can also see this from the formula that we used earlier. So if we apply this right here, what we're going to end up with is we have negative 1 fourth digamma of s over 4, but we also have from this, we're going to have another negative 1 fourth, so this can be negative 1 half digamma of s over 4 plus 1 half digamma of s plus 2 over 4. And the other part is this 1 over x, so we're going to have 1 over s over 4 times negative 1 fourth, so that's just going to be minus 1 over s. And so these are two forms of our answer right here. And overall, I think this was a really cool integral, a really great application of the digamma and uh, the digamma functions, and of course, the hyperbolic trig functions. I really love the way that this whole thing works out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.